Hello everyone. So this is a PowerPoint that I got from a, a webinar that I did the other day with the AP, the College Board, and uh, this kind of gives you a ton of information about the upcoming test um, and different ways that you can take the test and what you should be looking for in the next few days and a few things you should do and download and all sorts of things. So this will take a while, so buckle in, kind of watch it. The PowerPoint, of course, is uh, on the website right above the movie so you can look at the PowerPoint as well or if you need to go back and look at something. So these are kind of the four things we're going to look at. Um, E-ticket, five steps, things to do before exam day, what's going to happen on the exam day, and then just a little bit on afterwards. So first off, your E-ticket. If you registered for this test, which you probably did, hopefully, you did uh, early on in the year, then two days before the test, which should be this coming Saturday, right, you should receive this e-ticket in the mail. Now, this is if you've been getting emails from the College Board. right? So if you've been getting emails from the AP, right, then they've got your email and you should get this e-ticket. Okay. If for some reason you don't get it Saturday or maybe it's, you know, depending on when they get it out in the day, you want to check, you can always go to my AP, right? your account right here, right, and check it. And it should be in there too. Right? So if something happens and you don't get it in the email, right? each ticket, like it says here, is, is going to have your name. So it's personalized to you, nobody else. And it'll have a very important thing here, which is your Apple ID, okay, which you need to put on things. And also then your um, a click, right? A thing to click, a button to take you to your actual test. Okay. Now, even if you decide to not take this test, all right, hold on to this, okay, in case you need it, or in case you need a makeup exam, which we'll talk more about, right? But at least save it, okay? So our test is this coming Monday, May 11th, right? Eastern time, which is where we live here, is at 12 noon, okay? Um, we'll talk about logging in a half an hour before then. If you have some sort of conflict with this, please let me know, and uh, you know I can explain more, but some of that will come up as we go. Ours is, however, the very first AP test given, right? So if something's going to go wrong, it'll probably be us, right? So you're going to want to make sure you're as prepared as possible for what it should look like and how you're going to handle it so you don't have to worry as much about those kinds of things. So the AP claims that it's not going to be any harder than the normal APC test. Who knows, right? It is different, definitely. Um, you know, they're saying that you should get the same grade you would get normally. Hopefully that's the way it works. Um, they're not really graded on a curve. They're normalized. Um, this is a big one, though. All right, don't worry if you don't complete all parts of the question. All right, remember that to get a 5 on an AP test, you know, in the, in the old days when it was a 90-point 90, uh, 90 test, right, between the multiple choice and the free response, you generally could get a 5 around... 55, maybe a point or two above or below that out of 90, right? 55 out of 90 and you get a five. That's not a three, that's a five, right? So they don't really expect you to do everything, right? In the time frame. If you get through everything, great. And maybe this year you might be able to if you write well, right? But, um, you know, you don't have to get through everything, right? So don't freak out about, you know, if I left part, you know, E and I couldn't do it or something, now I'm never going to pass. Probably not true if you did the other parts well. So there's basically um, three different ways you can take this test, okay? And we're going to go through each type. Now one thing, note down here, and this will come up again, okay? Their um, default is Chrome, updated Chrome, right? They say Firefox, Safari, or Edge should also work, but not Internet Explorer. They said to, told us over and over again, no IE. Okay, so make sure you have something else downloaded if that's your default, right? Download one of these, the updated version, and uh, make that your default before you go to take the test. So here's option one, and this is by far the one suggested by the AP, I think for reasons of uh, grading, all right? And that is that basically what you do here is 
you uh, would make a split screen, they suggest. Half of your screen, as you see over here in the picture, half of your screen will be the actual AP exam with the question that you can read. And then over here could be your Word or Google Docs or Notes, wherever you're typing. Okay? And you type in your answers, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, however many there are. Note that they would like you to put your Apple ID and initials at the top of the page, kind of up here in the corner. Right? You type in your Apple ID, your initials. And then when it gets down to five minutes remaining, it's going to show you that or it'll tell you that it's time to submit your answer. Right? And basically what you'll do is you'll just go in here on your document, copy the whole thing, right? Select it all, copy it, paste it into the box, and you'll hit submit and you'll be good. Okay, so you won't have to um, you won't you won't have to do anything other than that, right? And they really suggest that this is the way you do the test. They say that for APC, we're not going to have to do a ton of equation writing. This is different than if you're taking, say, the calculus test or the chemistry test, where they suggest that you handwrite and do something different. Okay, for us, they're saying there's not going to be a ton of equations. Now, does that mean you won't be doing some in the background? No. Maybe you'll be explaining them. Right, so from what I've I've heard, you know, rather than actually having to do an integral to do something, you may have to explain it, right? Oh, because I, I have the acceleration as a function of time, so if I take the integral of the acceleration as a function of time evaluated from zero to time t, I can find the velocity uh, at that time. Note how I used limits of integration when doing integrals. Always very important, right? So you could type that out rather than actually doing it. And that's kind of what they're looking at in this test. So this is highly suggested, right? No images, right? No images um, in this version. They won't grade those. So no copy and pasting images or other things in this version. This is just strictly copy and paste typing, okay? And they highly suggest you save your work often in case something weird goes on, right? Which if you know how to do that, you can go into Microsoft Word and turn on automatic saving. Google Docs does it as a default and does it a lot. So if you're really familiar with Google Docs, that'd probably be what I would use. Um, I probably would use Word, but only because I know it really well. It's what I always use. But if you're more familiar with Google Docs, I would suggest that just from its saving purpose. Right? Okay. Um, you type your Apple ID and your initials at the top of the page. You copy and paste, and you hit submit. You have to hit submit within that five-minute period. Okay, uh, you're gonna have to do it once for each question, so you'll you'll do it twice. Um, one of the things about that is that um, if you hit submit, okay, within that five minutes, it may take a while, depending on how you do this, for it to upload right to the College Board. Especially again because this is the first actual AP test, so the first time they'll be trying this. Don't worry. The second question will pop up, okay, when it's supposed to, so that you get full time on it. So you don't need to, um, you know, hit submit, hit submit, hit submit, or God forbid, do not refresh the browser or do anything like that, because it'll kick you out, kind of like our concept builders do. So, uh, you know, it, it'll pop up the second question, and you can keep working, and it'll keep uploading in the background, right? Option two, this is where you do the same thing. Okay, notice how they have it set up again. Here's the exam, here's your Word document or Google Docs or Notes, right? And you're typing, but this time instead of copying and pasting into the box, you're gonna click on a button, you know, to browse and you're gonna, you're gonna save this, right? And then you're going to go in and attach the document, if you've ever done that before. Notice though, you can only have certain um, document types. Again, they suggest no images and uh, save your work often. Right? You gotta have a doc, docx, PDF, text, or ODT. Right? Notice these are not pictures, okay, in this case. This has gotta be uh, you know, docs. Okay. Um regardless, this is a nice note up here. They suggest that you prepare your blank documents before you even get to test day. Right, so that you have, you know, question one, question two. You've got your um, ID and and uh, initials at the top, and you're just like ready to type, right? So rather than setting things up, you know, pri uh, at the time, right, and using some of the limited time you have, right, uh, make one for each question. 
So this isn't really different. I'm not quite sure why you would do this rather than just copy and pasting, but hey, it can be done. Same kind of thing where you got to submit in the last five minutes and it'll keep submitting behind the scenes and all that good stuff. Apple ID and initials at the top of the page. All right, got to hit submit. Third way, this is if you want to handwrite. Okay. Um, again, they suggest that you don't need to do this this year. They say it should be best to type. I don't know if you've, hopefully you've done some of the practice problems and uh, maybe even some of the practice tests, right, that they've been doing this week. They've, they'll do a couple of them. And, uh, you know, you'll notice in there that you should be able to type everything out. Um, but if you're more comfortable handwriting, hey, you know, more power to you. Also, though, um, you know, this might be the option you choose if you don't have a laptop or a desktop, right? Something big that you can split the screen like we talked about, right? So if you're using, say, your phone to do this, which is not suggested, but if that's the device you've got, right, it's going to be a little harder to do on a, you know, to type on a phone, right? So you might want to handwrite. Um, do be aware that if you use your phone, you're going to have to do a lot of scrolling and that's a pain and that takes up time and that's hard to find, you know, it's what you can do. So you have your paper, hopefully pre-set out, right? It can be numbered, it can be, you know, just blank white like printer paper. You put your Apple ID and your initials and the page number at the top of each page. That's a different thing for this one. You can only use up to five photos per question. Okay, five photos, which would be five pages, right? One page per photo. You write your response with a dark pen or pencil. You know, make it dark as possible so they can read it. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons they like the typing aspect of it. Take a photo of your response in vertical orientation, not landscape. So, you know, so it looks like this in the picture. Okay, save it. One page per photo. Right? One page per photo. So, uh, you know, up to five pages each question. Right? And then you have to attach it. Right? And don't forget, if yours is three pages long, you've got to attach each page, right? And these are the only acceptable formats, PNG, JPEG, right? Or, or I guess a JPG, right? Or JPEG. So only these forms, right? So this is something you want to practice beforehand. If you're going to do this method, right? Practice how you're going to take the picture, um, how you're going to save that picture, what format you're going to save it in, where it's going to be saved on your computer so that you know how to get there, right? So that you can find it as quickly as possible. You don't want to waste time with technology, right? You want to focus on the physics. So again, they suggest this is probably a smartphone or tablet thing. Um, you know, attach all of your pages, hit submit. As they said, scrolling is going to be a pain with this if you're using something small. That's why they suggest a laptop or a desktop. Okay, so what happens if um, you need a makeup exam? Okay, um, why might you need a makeup exam? There's a whole other slide on this, right? So we'll go over that a little later. But if you need a, a makeup exam, there's really two ways to do it. If you don't take, if you never log in, this Monday on, on May 11th, okay? They are going to automatically send you an e-ticket for the makeup exam two days before that exam, which is in June. It's a long way away, right? Which is in June. And they're gonna automatically send you an e-ticket two days beforehand. So you don't even have to, if you never log in, right? Then you don't have to do anything. If you log in, right? So that they know that you were trying to take the test, you then have to go to here Right, cb.org backslash request makeup uh, and fill out a form. Right, on that form will be a reason why you have to do this. And again, we'll go over that a little bit. You've got to do that within boop, 48 hours right, of Monday. So by Wednesday, right, you'd have to do this. I would suggest doing it as soon as possible. Um, they should end up sending you an email approving or denying the request the week of May 25th. So it's not going to be instant. And if they approve you, you'll get your e-ticket for the makeup test two days before that test. They suggest do not call them. All right, They don't have anybody there. There would be no one to answer the phone. All their call centers are closed, right? So don't call them. Fill out the form, and then you just got to wait. They really assume that everybody's going to take the test this Monday. 
Okay, so they 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 don't want you to take the makeup, and there's a, a couple of good reasons for that. One is if something happens, then you're pretty much done, right? So because if, if it doesn't work on makeup day, you're in trouble. And secondly, um, they had to stack the tests differently, so there might be more than one test that you've got to take on that day, right? Whereas with this one, you're probably free and clear, and it's the only test that day. So you know, from a testing standpoint. Probably better to just take it in, on May 11th and be done with it. Okay, so here's important five steps to take before you do the exam day. All right, so we're going to talk about your uh, contact info, tech, um, how to practice this test, which is a really important thing I think you should do before Monday, getting everything you need together for the exam, and then, you know, we'll go over again, e-ticket stuff and that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Um, what you need for the exam, by the way, equations, table, calculator, right? That kind of thing will pop up. So contact information. Um, if you've been receiving emails and you can do the demo that I'll talk about in a few minutes, you should be good to go. Okay. But if, you, if you're not getting emails, again, go to myap, collegeboard.org and check on your email address, right? Click update, all that stuff, right? Um, in subscriptions, confirm that you check the box and so on. Don't worry, if you're not getting emails from the AP, your e-ticket should be in your My AP account two days before the test, which is this Saturday, right? It should show up in your My AP account and you should be able to uh, access it from there. What tech are you using, right? Don't wait until the day of, right? Get this set up and know what you're going to use. Again, they would suggest the bigger the better, laptop, desktop, so you can type, copy, and paste. Um, you don't need a lockdown browser. You may have heard of that in the past. No lockdown browsers needed. Okay. They do. If you have the Grammarly Grammarly plugin, you'll need to remove it for the test. Okay. I mean that's not something you would use in APC, but maybe you've got it there for an English AP or something like that. So get rid of that plugin. I guess it might interfere with something. Okay. Remember. They are expecting you should be able to type your answers. Because of that, and this is kind of key, there's no graphs or diagrams this year on the test. They will not make you graph something. They will not make you draw a force diagram. Okay. Now, they may ask you to analyze a graph. Here's the graph of your data with a line of best fit drawn. How could you use the line of best fit to... Right? And then you could write a paragraph about how you're going to use that line of best fit by taking the slope of two points on the line, and that would be this, and then you could solve for that, you know, like those kinds of questions we've done before. But you'd be typing it out, right? You wouldn't have to make the graph. You may have to discuss a force diagram. Right? Oh, the forces acting on the object are the normal force and the force of gravity, which have to be the same size because, or have to balance because um, it's not accelerating vertically. And then there's a, a, a force of tension to the right and a force of kinetic friction to the left. And since it's accelerating to the right, the force of tension is bigger than the, than the uh, force of kinetic friction. Right? You could type that out. Yeah, it's easier to draw the diagram, but you're not doing that this year. Okay, That might be something you're going to do in Calc or Chem or Stats, AP Stats, those three in particular, but not in APC. Again, smartphone will work, but... You're going to have to do a lot of scrolling, and it's going to be a pain. So they suggest you prepare your documents for typing beforehand, right? So make your um, two pages if you're doing the copy and paste thing or the uh, saving and attaching thing, right? Have those ready. Have your, um, your ID and your initials at the top of the page, right? And save it somewhere clearly labeled folder that you know where it is right you don't want to have to be looking around for stuff your ap exam has two questions so you know maybe title them something like this so that when you attach it they'll know what you're doing right you don't want to make them do any more work than they have to do to grade this if you type in ap physics or your title is ap physics question one dot doc right or doc x or notes or whatever it is right or jpeg if you're if you're uh I'm sorry, not JPEG, PDF or something, if you're saving it and attaching it, whatever it is, right? If you do this, they'll know which one to grade when. Right? So prepare those beforehand, because then you're ready to go. Um, if you're going to do that other method, get your documents ready for handwriting. Have your paper out, 
right? You need at least 10 pieces of paper. You might not use them all, right? But there can be no more than five, remember, per, per uh, answer, per question. Standard size paper, number two pencil, or preferably pen with black or blue ink. Make it dark so they can read it. Write nicely. Right? You can only attach up to five pictures for each one. Probably won't need that many, right, for our test, but never know. Right? AP ID and initials at the top of the page. Number the pages, right? Number the pages and uh, be ready to use them. This is kind of key. So I've got a link for this on the same page as this uh, movie, but you can also go right here. Um, this is up and running right now. It's a demo. It's kind of cool. You have to log in like you will on the actual day of the test. Um, you can use your own Apple ID or you can type in the word practice. It says, says that on there. Right? And you can actually um, practice logging in, setting up, and submitting even. Right? You'll see what it looks like. You'll see what um, the timers look like that are on the page that will be running during this. Okay, This is a time test. So you'll get to see all that. Also, it's a check on your tech. If you can run the demo, you should be good on test day. Right? If the demo runs in your browser, you should be good on test day. Again, no IE, please. Something else, updated versions preferably. Okay, so I would highly suggest you do this a few times. Play with it. If you're not sure what technique you want to use, you know, um, do I want to copy and paste? Do I want to attach? Do I want to take pictures and attach? All right, your three options, handwrite, take pictures and attach. Then, uh, you know, practice them. See which one you like. Know where the buttons are, right? How to find everything. Uh, so do that, please. It would really help. So what do you need on exam day? Well, key thing, of course, is you need your exam ticket, right? Sorry, you need your exam ticket. There's a thing called an exam day checklist, which I'll talk more about, okay, and which is also on my website. You can download it from them, but I've got it on my website as well, which is a two-page thing, which takes you through pretty much everything I'm telling you about this and, you know, gives you little check boxes. They suggest, because I know many of you are taking more than one AP test, that you run a new one of these off for each AP test and redo it and have it sitting next to you. It also has things like your ID on it and stuff like that, right, that you'll, you'll put on it beforehand, okay? Um, browser, you know, so Chrome, remember, is recommended. Firefox, Safari, or Edge, no IE, right? Make sure your internet's up and running, hopefully, on that day. Um, you need Word, Google Dots, Notes, something like that that you're familiar with. Yes, you can have the your notes or study guides. This is an open book test, but remember, the more time you spend flipping through your notes, the more time you're not writing something, right? You're not answering the questions. You can have a textbook if you want, if you have one. Um, anything really in the past, I would highly suggest you download the equation sheet, which again is on my website, right? And have a calculator. They claim that you don't need one, right? That the calculation should be easy enough, which makes me think you can use things like 10 instead of 9.8. But, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the calculator, you might want to use it just to be safe. And the equation sheet. Now, a lot of the equation sheet, remember, isn't stuff for us. It is, it's, you know, the AP uh, E&M, Electricity and Magnetism Test. And because this is open book and stuff, you can write stuff on there. Do you not know the second kinematic equation? Put it on your sheet. Do you want the one-dimensional elastic collision equations we derived in class? Put it on the sheet. Right? Do you want the rotational inertias of the common objects around their centers of mass or around one edge in the case of a rod, thin rod? Put it on your sheet, right? Know where it is. Right? Group it together so that you can find it easily. Spend a little bit of time beforehand, you know, prepping these things. And here's their little page saying, hey, folks, don't waste time looking stuff up on the internet. You should know this stuff. You know a lot of physics, right? So if you're looking stuff up, you're losing, right? This is probably not a good way to do the test, okay? And they're checking for plagiarism and all that kind of stuff. They're going to be running it through plagiarism machines, which is another reason why they prefer you type and submit, right? Uh, copy and paste. But, um, you know, keep that in mind, right? You can have all the stuff you want, but time looking up stuff is time you're not working on the test. So again, uh, you should have gotten already, I hope, an exam confirmation email with your Apple ID and all the different exams. And then two days before each exam, you will get your e-ticket. 
right? a different one for each exam. This is the AP exam day checklist. So this is the document, right? Two pages. Um, you can print it right off my website. You can print it off right here, All right? CB.org back check back slash, sorry, AP checklist, All right? I would suggest you print it off. You fill it out. You have it with you. See, there's going to be places that are going to prompt you for your code and all these things. And it, it, a lot of what we talk about is on there, right? So it'll help you get through it all. By the way, they uh, suggest, and this is a good thing, hasn't come up yet, 30 minutes before you start the test. So 11.30 a.m., right, because the test starts at noon. They suggest that you log in 30 minutes beforehand. Okay, Don't wait until the last minute to try to log in. And then you just sit and wait All right, once you get through everything. Don't refresh your browser. Don't restart and shut down because if you do that, it all goes away and you got to get back in again. Right? Just sit and wait. Um, don't worry if the test doesn't instantly start at noon. They told us they may wait a minute or two just to try to make sure everybody's in and ready to go. Okay, so don't freak out if it's 12.02 and your question hasn't popped up yet. It should pop up without you needing to refresh. Okay, so 11.30 a.m. you should be trying to log in right away with your e-ticket, right, and your Apple ID and all that good stuff, So that, and then just sit and wait, right, and be ready. So again, they suggest you do one of these, different one for each test. On exam day, 30 minutes before your local stop start time, log in, get your e-ticket, right? Complete your identity info, wait for the exam to begin. Again, do the demo, right, that's online so that you're prepared for that kind of thing. You're only gonna, question one will appear, you'll get 25 minutes to do whatever you're doing. They suggest typing, copying and pasting. You can also save and attach. You can also handwrite, take a picture, and attach. If you're doing that option, though, remember, you got to think about how am I getting that picture to the device I logged in on so that I can submit it, right? You can't be looking at the test on one thing and submit on another device. So you got to work that out beforehand, right? Practice. You have 25 minutes to answer that question. And then you'll have five minutes to submit your response, okay? Don't wait till the very last second, right? They're hoping you're done in the 25 minutes. Don't play games here. When that timer switches to red, I believe, and says, you know, you have five minutes to submit, you should be thinking about submitting right away so that you make sure everything works. Again, don't worry if it doesn't finish submitting, okay? Because the second question will pop up after the end of that five minutes regardless, and you can get working on the other part, right? The next part is only 15 minutes long. It's a shorter question, lab-based question. And then you'll have five minutes to submit that. Okay. Now, one thing they do suggest, don't shut down and get out of there until the exam is completed. And it'll tell you that. right? It'll tell you when the exam is completed. And that's when it's accepted both of your submissions. All right? So I assume a little box or something will pop up. So you know, wait till that's done and then you'll know they got everything. Okay. Then you know you should be good to go. This is a good one to think about, right? Make sure you're ready for the test. Make sure your environment is ready for the test, right? Remove those distractions. Get the, uh, you know, younger brothers and sisters out to play in the yard instead of uh, being in the house for that 45 minutes, right? Um, shut the doors, right? Have your internet there. I, I like this one. I hadn't even really thought about this till I saw it on the, the webinar, right? If it's your house is like mine, you know, we've got uh, four people in it and a lot of times we're all using up bandwidth. Right. Well, tell them to get off of the Fortnite, and uh, in my house it's the uh, Minecraft. Right. Uh, get off the Netflix, um, and you know, let you use a hundred percent of the bandwidth. Right. So that you have the best connection possible that you can have. Have your checklist, your equation sheet, everything sitting next to you. Your paper, if you're going to handwrite. Your documents made up, if you're going to copy and paste or attach, save and attach. Right. Devices plugged in, everything's good to go. Um, this is a big screen. You can read if you wanted to, but it's just basically don't cheat. They'll, they claim they'll know, um, and they will bust you and send it to your colleges if you try to cheat. Right? And they'll cancel all of your other AP test scores as well. Right? And they're looking for plagiarism detection software. They may send their questions to me and say, does this look like a reasonable answer that somebody, that this person could have put there? Right? Or, you know, is this a bogus answer? So, you know, they're going to be doing different things. 
So, 30 minutes before the start of the test, 11.30 a.m., this, sun, this Monday, sorry, you're going to get your AP exam ticket out, right? You're going to uh, hit the button and you're going to log in. You're going to put in all of your identity info that they need. A timer will show you how long until the exam starts. Again, the timer may run to zero and then wait a minute or two before it actually starts. Don't freak. Don't refresh your browser. If you refresh your browser, you get booted out and you have to log back in again. Who knows how long that'll take you, especially if you're doing it just before the exam starts. And that's time you don't get back. All right. Your timer is the same as everybody's timer in the entire world this year. Okay, so they're not restarting it for you because it took five minutes for you to log in. All right, so be logged in and just wait. Okay, don't refresh your browser. So the questions are usually, you know, going to be divided in parts, A, B, C, D, E. Hopefully you've done some of the uh, example things that I put up on the website. Um, so, you know, label them that way. Make it readable in that, you know, as you do in your in your documents. Practice that if you're typing, right, so that you can make things. Again, the uh, Grammarly plugin needs to be disabled or it won't function. Once you do submit a question, you can't go back to it, right? Once you get to question two, you can't go back to question one. Um, even if you're done with question one early, you can't go on to question two. It'll pop up on its own, right? So, Everything is very locked down to one question at a time. You're going to get, you know, a thing like this, a counter on your screen. Again, do the demo. You'll see that. When it gets to time left to submit, this counter would get replaced by something like this, right, which would count down your five minutes. Remember, you can get a five even if you don't finish everything as long as your other parts were good. Um, but if you don't submit a response, you don't get any points. And by the way, the one thing that they're pretty clear about uh, in terms of allowing you to take a retake is that if you don't finish because of time, that's your fault and you don't get a retake. Almost anything else happening, they're going to let you take the retake if you fill out the form and submit it. Right? But if it's just, you know, if you type into your form, I just didn't have time to finish question one. I ran out of time to submit. I waited too long and by the time I went to submit it was over. That's your bad. All right. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing they were really big about. Okay. Um, so, again, you know, there's a couple things you have to do depending on what you're going to do here. Right? You're either going to copy and paste into the box and hit submit. You're going to, um, no, that's this one. Sorry. You're going to paste your work in, right? By the way, the little clear field button here is interesting, right? So if you type something, if you paste something in and you didn't get it all or it looks weird or something happens, right? You can clear field, which deletes everything, and then you can paste it in again, right? And then you hit submit. You're going to, if you're using the uh, typing, but I'm going to save and attach that document, right? Here's the browse for a file, right? Where you find that file. Know where you're saving things, right? Know where it is beforehand. Set up a folder for it. Set up a path for it so that you know how to get there quickly so you're not wasting time doing that. And submit. And if you're doing the photos, right, upload a photo. Attach them. One for each page. No more than five a question. Labeled appropriately. And submit. Like I said earlier, don't worry if your transfer continues after the exam ends or after question one. It is still submitting. Right? And you can just keep working. But as I also said, wait till your submission is fully loaded before you close your browser or turn everything off or restart your computer at the end of the test. Right? You should see this. Your AP exam is complete right? if you wait long enough. If something happens and you never see this, you go, you fill out this form, you explain that. I thought I did everything right, but it never um, correctly submitted. And they're going to give you a, an e-ticket. You know, they're going to they're going to allow you to take it again in June. All right, they understand that tech here is an issue when you're doing it this way. So, you know, if you explain it properly, not if you run out of time and you just didn't submit. I submitted within time, and it's just not telling me that I'm complete. You know, so wait a while and make sure, especially if you know you have a slow internet connection at home. Um, so this is a screen I was talking about, you know, when they were saying that they'll take lots of excuses, okay, for this. Yeah, they'd prefer you take it May 11th. It's going to make it a lot easier for them to grade and all that stuff. But 
if something happens, your browser crashes, um, your internet goes down, um, you know, some of those things you might be able to fix. Oops, I hit the, uh, or I, uh, I accidentally closed out my form, so, but I can, or my, uh, my doc, right? But I can reopen it quickly and I'm okay with that. That took 10 seconds and, and I'm fine. I, I, I'll still have time to finish. Then, you know, go ahead and do that. But if something happens, you know, and they even talked about like your, your brother and sister running in and jumping on top of you and, you know, and, and disrupting what you're doing, you know, that can be a, an excuse for you to take the, uh, the, uh, makeup test. Right. Remember, though, if you push it to the makeup test and something happens, well, then you're out of luck, right? If you're sick on Monday, right, you wake up and you just feel horrible. Take the makeup. You can take the makeup test. That's always been an excuse, right? But fill out the form within 48 hours and do all that, right? Again, this tip, don't hit the refresh button on your browser or the back arrow, right? This is... You guys actually have some training because this is exactly what happens in concept builders, yeah? If you, like, hit the refresh button or the back button, it takes you back a page, but it doesn't know that you were in the middle of the concept builder. It's not going to know you're in here and you're going to have to log back in and everything. Don't try calling them. They're not there. Nobody's working the phones. Your exam score should be done by about July 15-ish, give or take a little bit, right? And they'll be reported in the normal one through five way. Um... Don't forget you have a free score send for each of your AP tests. If you, you have to do that by logging to your My AP by June 20th, right? And that's free after June 20th. You got to pay, right? And if you want it rushed, you got to pay more. So use that free one, right, properly. Check your tech. We've talked through this all the way, right? But make sure everything is working. You have the updated versions of Chrome, ideally, Firefox, Safari, or Edge, no IE, right? All that good stuff. All right, so uh, make sure you've got the updated version. Everything's set up before you start, right? Change your default browser to Chrome. I mean, Grammarly plugin again, they're talking about. Um, get all that set up, right? So again, folks, check my website, right? Download the checklist, one for each test that you're taking. Work through that before the test. Have all your materials prepared. Have your space prepared. Have your house prepared. Um, know how you're going to handle the test. Do the demo, right, so that you're familiar with the test thing. We want this to be all about the physics, not about the tech, right? Not about the tech. That's not the point. And if you've watched any of the videos, you know, some of the, the guys that have been making these videos are actual AP graders, right? And they say, like, they are not trying to trip you up. They're not going to grade you down because your English isn't perfect. Yeah, they want you to use the physics words correctly, right? If you mean velocity, say velocity. If you mean speed, say speed. And right? if you mean magnitude of something, you know, say it that way. But, um... You know, they, uh, they aren't going to worry about, you know, a comma here and there type of thing, right? And that's true even if you have to type out an equation. And right? if you have to type out a little bit of an equation and you want to type uh, displacement is one-half AT squared, okay? You just type it out, right? You know, X equals 1 slash 2 AT2 or T... Um, uh, carrot two or something like that, right? You don't need an equation editor. You're not supposed to use images anyway, remember, if you're typing. So, you know, you just type it like that. They're going to give you the benefit of the doubt in those, right? As long as you're using decent symbols. In fact, they even mentioned, like, if you need to use a Greek symbol, don't go searching for that and, and submit it unless you're good at it and you know how to do it, right? You can just write it out. If you want to say theta, write it out as a theta, right? Just do something like that. So sine theta, Write out the words, right? Shouldn't take that long. Um, that's what they're looking for. They're they're gonna grade the physics, all right? Not your English. So I hope you're you're doing some review and you're prepping for this. You guys know a ton of physics after two years with me, so good luck. I think you'll do well, right? Prepare yourself, and we'll talk to you after the test. <laughs>